are you always the first person to see a fault in every situation or every person are you always the first person to complain about anything well good eyes maybe but then in the next few minutes i'll be sharing with you where when or if at all you should point out faults in people stick around this is just Njara. welcome back my name is Njara njama and of course like you already know this is just Njara. today we're talking about all the people that their fault finding radar is at its peak and guess what there's an up and a down to this situation and of course it affects everybody somehow whether in relationship or not so we're going straight away you know how you just walk into a room you and a group of friends and there is somebody that already knows that your clothes is not ironed your hair is not straightened your makeup is not cool. there is just somebody that has the eyes to point out every tiniest detail about you now there is a good and a bad side to this the first question you need to ask yourself if you are this kind of person the first question you need to ask yourself is what is the intention behind you finding fault in people there is the intention of trying to correct them you know which is a good intention however there is this other one which is you trying to feel that you're better than them or you trying to console yourself as to so many other things so now if your intention is to correct them stick around i'll be sharing with you somehow a ways for you to correct them without them being you know hostile to you but if however your mission is always and always always to find fault in people what they say what they do what they type whatever it is i have some news for you first thing you don't notice about you always finding fault in people is that it is first showing your insecurities like it's loud in it it is telling the world that look the reason why she is always or he's always pointing out something wrong in something or somebody could be that it is because he or she has a certain problem the problem could be that you have low self-esteem you know or you just want to make your partner feel less than they are if you are in a relationship so it is actually showing your insecurities Second thing it is showing when you're always finding fault is that you do not want to take responsibilities for actions Yes, when you are always the first person to say oh, it was his mistake or oh, it was her mistake or oh it, it, You have nothing to do with it. You're trying to tell the world that you know what? Uh -uh, I'm not I'm not responsible for this. So He is the one to take the blame. You know when you point you point that finger to somebody guess what all of this is pointing to you so that's the second thing is showing. The third thing, always finding fault in other people tells about you is that you do not want to change. You do not want to change. Well, the only constant thing in life they say is change. But however, when you're always quick to point out the bad or the wrong or the mistakes of other people, when are you going to find the time to actually change? I mean, improving yourself or improving the things that you need to improve on. The final thing, Finding fault in people tells about you is that you do not want to apologize Yes um, In situations where you know you've done wrong But instead of you to apologize you turn the table around and start picking out the things that the other person is supposed to do to make the situation perfect as opposed to think to the things that you are supposed to take responsibility for and apologize so these four things Every time you want to find a fault in somebody or in something or in anything at all, consider them very briefly before you go ahead and find a fault. That is for those that are always, always finding fault in everything that people do. Terrible. And for the wrong intentions. So we are back to you. Who tries to correct the other person? Uh, you're still finding the fault, but then you're doing it with the intention of making the person better or improving. The first thing, the first, 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 first rule in this, if you must find a fault in somebody or in something about somebody, you have to determine whether it is in public or it's in private. 
now what this is going to do for you is this it's going to make you know the technique make you know the you know best way to go about it. if it is in public you are bound by so many rules you cannot just wake up and just say oh because i have a good intention i'm just going to go and say it the way it comes to my mind uh-uh no but if it's in, it's in private, oh, well, you know, you can say it the way you want to, to a, to a large extent. But you have to be careful because whether in public or in private, it's still going to rub off on the ego of the other person. So you got to learn these following tricks that I'll be sharing with you in just a few moments. My first, nice is always neat. You have to find a nice way to do it and a nice way to say it. It doesn't matter. There is always a nicer way to say whatever it is you said. Don't come off as, oh, I'm better than you. Or come off like, oh, man, you, you messed up. And so, uh, no. Nice is always neat. Let that be your watchword. Second thing that you must bear in mind is you have to separate the person from the mistake. Don't go about saying that, hey, Bala, you have done this or done that. Uh-uh. No. You might sound something like this instead. Say, hey, Bola, I think there is something wrong in the way that this happened. You know? So you have made them to feel like, okay, maybe you made a mistake, but it was not really you who made it, but it was something that happened. You have to separate the person from the mistake. Don't go and say, ah, um, that letter that you wrote, you have made a mistake. It just, you keep emphasizing that it is, their, it is them, it is you, it is, ah. Uh. Go about it in a way that makes them feel detached from the mistake so that they can see it very well. And of course, make amends if possible. Third thing that you must bear in mind is that expect hostility. Honestly, expect tension and make sure that you diffuse tension. Now, people, most people react to correction different ways. Some people, when you tell them that they made something wrong or they, they have a fault here or there, the first thing they ask you is, what is your business? Some people will tell you, mind your business. Other people will tell you, I don't see anything wrong in it. Other people will tell you, and so what? So when you experience that kind of, you know, hostility from them, make sure you diffuse it. Don't be like, oh, well, I'm trying to tell you something and you're saying something and blah. No, it is not your mistake. It's their mistake. You're trying to help them. Have that at the back of your mind. So what you do instead is you say, oh, no, I don't mean to come off as rude. I don't mean to come off as know-it-all. You just have to know how to diffuse the tension. Remember, you are trying to help them. And finally, the fourth and final thing you must bear in mind is this. Nowhere to back off. This is very important. When you've done all of this and the person is still unrepentant or the person just feels that, look, it is beyond your league, just back off. Stop it and say, I'm sorry, and that's it. It is not your mistake. It is their lives and they are the best person that know how to drive it. So that is that for you who has a good intention of, of course, trying to correct some other person. We have come to the end of another episode of Just Jara. I know... Well, like, personally, I have an eye for fault. If you just want, I could see a fault from a thousand miles away. But the good thing is that my mouth is not as sharp as my mind. So that is such a relief. I do not get to always try to point out fault. So I just, instead of pointing out, I try to find a better way of making you see what the situation is. But before I go, I just want to leave you with this. If you are experiencing, you're in a relationship or um, you have a friend, in fact, you're in a relationship where your partner or your friend or whoever it is, is always, 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 always telling you you're not good enough, telling you there's something wrong with the way you think, there's something wrong with the way you talk, nothing you do is ever, ever good. For me, I think that is emotional abuse and you just need to break off of it if you cannot do anything about it. Talk to the person. You will get to a point where you will eventually lose yourself in trying to become that person that your partner, your friend, your family, whoever it is, is trying to make you be. So stand up for yourself and create a boundary. Always, always create a boundary if you are in such a situation. Somebody is always trying to be on your neck to, oh, be this person. Oh, do this. Oh, study this. Oh, act like this. Create a boundary. And each time they are trying to cross the boundary, remind them that, look, this is my boundary and you're trying to cross it 
for your own personal growth and development and for your peace of mind eventually finally 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 there is this quote i saw somewhere and it says that your flaws are beautiful for the person that is meant to love you so all those faults that you think that you have they're beautiful and condonable if that's a word for anyone that is meant to love you thank you thank you thank you for staying tuned so far on our talk today on just on dryer don't forget to send me an email i have been expecting to care from all of you send me an email on at just sorry sorry that's just on dryer no. send me an email at Njara with a double N. That's N J U A R A at gmail.com. I want to hear from you what you think about this vlog or any other vlog that we have seen or you know sent you in the past couple of months. Thank you for staying tuned. Don't forget, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. There's a subscribe button below. Just click it. And um, you can follow me on social media. Uh on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. I'm your girl, Jason Jara. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying tuned.